Welcome to the video homework for topic 4.11, Substituent Effects on the Rate of Electrophilic Aromatic Substitution. Before you attempt the problems in this video, I do recommend that you read the Lesson 4.11 in the Organic Chemistry 2 Primer 2018 by Professors Tennyson, Hujiri, and Smith. The first problem in this video homework is to categorize each of these substituents by indicating whether each is capable of serving as an inductive withdrawing group, an inductive donor, a resonance withdrawing group, or a resonance donor. And of course, a substituent can fill two of these roles. And in such cases, we're going to have to indicate which of the properties will have a more pronounced influence on its ability to stabilize a cation. To facilitate our ability to carry out this task, we should draw out the Lewis structures of each of these substituents. So I've done that here. And since this question is specifically asking about the substituent's ability to stabilize a cation, we could draw a cationic site directly adjacent to each of these substituents to help us visualize how each of these may or may not stabilize a cation. So now we have these substituents directly adjacent to these carbocationic sites. And let's see if each of these can serve as a resonance donor. That might be the easiest thing to assess. If you have a lone pair on an element in the same row as carbon, you'll be able to do efficient resonance donation. So in cases like that, you'd have the ability for the substituent to serve as a resonance donor. In a case where you have chlorine, which in the periodic table is not in the same row as carbon, it's in a row lower, these lone pairs are too large to interact efficiently with the orbitals on carbon, and it will not be a very efficient resonance donor. So now that we've identified resonance donors, let's take a look at whether we have any inductive donors. Well, in the case of a hydrocarbon substituent, one specific type of inductive influence on the stability of the carbocation is hyperconjugation, and that is an inductive effect, so hydrocarbon substituents can be inductive donors. The other two groups aren't capable of being very good at inductively donating. In fact, if you think about this positive charge, it will serve to have a great deal of repulsion. So this nitrogen would like to pull electrons towards it, not donate electrons towards a different carbocation. So this will be an inductive withdrawing group. Likewise, the chlorine is more electronegative than carbon, so it would like to actually pull electrons away from the carbon and induce a partial positive charge on the carbon. And that's bad if you already have a positive charge on that carbon. So that's an inductive withdrawing group as well. Now we also have the ability with the nitrogen of the nitro group to have resonance donation away from the carbocation, not towards it, but away from it towards this oxygen. So that's actually a resonance withdrawing group as well. Now in that case, if you have competition between induction and resonance, you would guess that the resonance withdrawing would have a more substantial influence on the ability to stabilize or destabilize a carbocation. Our next question points out an observation that anisole undergoes chlorination faster than benzene does. And we're asked to explain some reason for this observation. So anisole is just benzene with a methoxy group on it. Once we know that, we have to think about the electrophilic aromatic substitution on this particular substrate. Well, we first recall the general electrophilic aromatic substitution mechanism. An electrophile is going to attack by an electrophilic addition, and then you're going to have an electrophilic elimination of a proton, and by doing that you substitute some new group onto the benzene ring. If you do an electrophilic aromatic substitution on anisole, and here we're going to consider chlorination, you really have three regioisomers that could be products. You could have substitution so that the chloro that you add is ortho, meta, or para to the first substituent that's on that ring. And the reason that this is important for us to consider is that the way that substituents exert their influence on the rate of the electrophilic aromatic substitution is that substituents can either stabilize or destabilize the intermediate, which is a carbocation. And you'll get different carbocations on the basis of whether you add the chlorine ortho to the methoxy group, meta to the methoxy group, or para. So if anisole is going to react faster than benzene, and we're told that it does, we should be able to demonstrate how the presence of that methoxy group gives more stability to the intermediate. And in our previous problem, we looked at how resonance donation can help you stabilize a carbocation. 
So this one checks out as being more stable than a carbocation resulting from chlorination of benzene where you don't have an ability to stabilize that through resonance of the substituent. You can stabilize it through resonance of moving these double bonds around, but the anisole has that resonance stabilization as well as additional resonance stabilization due to the donation of the lone pair. A similar resonance stabilization can be observed when you do the para substitution. You can move these electrons down like this. In the case of a meta substitution, you'll be able to move the electrons here, but you won't be able to move them down to stabilize this. But in at least two of the cases, for two of the possible regioisomers, you gain greater stability for the carbocation intermediate than you have with benzene. And that is why anisole undergoes a faster chlorination or any electrophilic aromatic substitution for that case because the methoxy group stabilizes the carbocation intermediate by resonance donation of electrons. And that was really the major point of this lesson in the primer to help us evaluate how the presence of different substituents will influence the rate of electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions. One type of problem that this knowledge helps us address is the ability to rank substrates in order of reactivity to bromination or any other electrophilic aromatic substitution. And this question asks us to do just that, where number one will be the fastest reacting. So in order to assess that, we'll have to categorize our individual substituents as being resonance donors, resonance withdrawing groups, etc., like we saw in the first problem in this video. So if we go through that thought process as we did in the first problem, we see that in our first case we have an inductive withdrawing. You may even be able to recognize that you could have resonance withdrawing capability because of the pi bond in this substituent. So this is a withdrawing substituent. These types of substituents are deactivating with respect to benzene. If we have a resonance donor, those are actually very activating and make the reaction go a lot faster, as we saw in the case of anisole in the previous problem. The case of halogens, which are only inductive withdrawing groups and not resonance withdrawing groups, leads to a slightly deactivated reaction rate for electrophilic aromatic substitution. And in the case of a hydrocarbon substituent, we have hyperconjugation that will help stabilize the carbocation intermediate but not quite as much as a resonance donor would. So we categorize these in the language of the primer as being just slightly active. And benzene, of course, is what we're comparing everything to. So now we have all of these things categorized in a way that will allow us to rank these. The fastest reaction will take place when you have a very activating substituent, which is a resonance donor. Second fastest, if it's only slightly activating. Third fastest will be benzene. And then the ones that are a little bit slower, a little bit deactivated compared to benzene, will be fourth, the slightly deactivating chlorobenzene, and fifth will be the slowest benzaldehyde. Although we're going to discuss regiochemistry a little bit more in the next lesson, we can start to think about how our knowledge of substituent effects might influence regiochemistry. And this problem asks us a pretty simple question. It's asking us which of the three rings in this compound would react fastest upon heating with sulfuric and nitric acid at some elevated temperature. We first have to recognize that that is a nitration reaction, which is a type of electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction we're being asked to do. And we're not being asked which specific site in this whole molecule, which proton, will get substituted for the nitro group. We're simply being asked which of the three rings, this ring, this ring, or this ring, would be substituted the most rapidly. In order to address that, we would look at the substituents, and we would see a resonance donor here. That's a very activating substituent. The central ring has these two bromines, each of which is a slightly deactivating substituent. And this ring on the right has a slightly activating hydrocarbon substituent. Well, since we know that the activating substituent speeds up the rate of substitution on that kind of ring, we would expect this ring to be substituted the most quickly by any type of electrophilic aromatic substitution. 